The Vanishing American Hobo. The American hobo has a hard time hoboing nowadays due to the increase in police surveillance of highways, railroad yards, seashores, river bottoms, embankments, and the thousand and one hiding holes of industrial night. In California, the pack rat, the original old type who goes walking from town to town with supplies and bedding on his back, the homeless brother, has practically vanished, along with the ancient gold-panning desert rat who used to walk with hope in his heart through struggling western towns that are now so prosperous they don't want old bums anymore. Man don't want no pack rats here, even though they found it California, said an old man hiding with a can of beans and an Indian fire in a river bottom outside Riverside, California in 1955. Great sinister tax-paid police cars, 1960s model with humorless searchlights, are likely to bear down at any moment on the hobo in his idealistic lope of freedom and the hills of holy silence and holy privacy. There's nothing nobler than to put up with a few inconveniences like snakes and dust for the sake of absolute freedom. I myself was a hobo, but only of sorts, as you see, because I knew someday my literary efforts would be rewarded by social protection. I was not a real hobo with no hope ever except that secret eternal hope you, you get sleeping in empty boxcars flying up the Salinas Valley in hot January sunshine full of golden eternity towards San Jose where mean looking old bows look at you from surly lip and offer you something to eat and a drink too. Down by the tracks or in the Guadalupe Creek bottom. The original hobo dream was best expressed in a lovely little poem mentioned by Dwight Goddard in his Buddha's Bible. Oh, for this one rare occurrence, gladly would I give 10,000 pieces of gold. A hat is on my head, a bundle on my back, and my staff, the refreshing breeze and the full moon. In America, there's always been, you will notice the peculiarity Whitmanesque tone of this poem, probably written by old Gadal, a definite special idea of footwalking freedom going back to the days of Jim Bridger and Johnny Appleseed and carried on today by a vanishing group of hardy old timers still seen sometimes wanting it in it waiting in a desert highway for a short bus ride into town for panhandling or work and grub or wandering the eastern part of the country hitting Salvation Armies and moving on from town to town and state to state toward the eventual, eventual doom of big city skid rows when their feet give out. Nevertheless, not long ago in California, I did see, deep in the gorge by a railroad track outside San Jose buried in eucalyptus leaves and the blessed oblivion of vine, a bunch of cardboard and jerry-built huts at evening in front of one of which sat an aged man puffing his 15 cent grager tobacco in his corn cob pipe. Japan's mountains are full of free huts and old men who cackle over root brews waiting for supreme enlightenment, which is only obtainable through occasional complete solitude. In America, camping is considered a healthy sport for Boy Scouts, but a crime for mature men who have made it their vocation. Poverty is considered a virtue among the monks of civilized nations. In America, you spend a night in the calaboose if you're caught short without your vacancy ch change. It was 50 cents less I heard of. Hard. What now? In Bruegel's time, children danced around the hobo. He wore huge and raggy clothes and always looked straight ahead and different to the children. <clears throat> and the families didn't mind the children playing with the hobo. It was a natural thing. But today, mothers hold tight their children when the hobo passes through town because of what newspaper made the hobo to be. The rapist, the strangler, child eater. Stay away from strangers. They'll give you poison candy. Though the Bruegel hobo and the hobo today are the same, the children are different. Where are even the ch chaplain-esque hobo? The old divine comedy hobo. The hobo is Virgil, he leadeth. The hobo enters the child's world. Like in the famous painting by Bruegel of a huge hobo solemnly passing through the washed tub village being barked at and laughed at by children, the St. Pede Piper. But today it's an adult world. It's not a child's world. Today the hobo's made to slink. Everybody's watching the cop heroes on TV. 
Benjamin Franklin was like a hobo in Pennsylvania. He walked through Philly with three, three big rolls under his arms and a Massachusetts half penny on his hat. John Muir was a hobo who went off in, into the mountains with a pocket full of dried bread, which he soaked in creeks. Did Whitman terrify the children of Louisiana when he walked the open road? What about the black hobo, moonshiner, chicken snatcher, Remus? The black hobo in the South is the last of the Brugo bums. Children pay tribute and stand in awe, making no comment. You see him coming out of the piney barren with an old unspeakable sack. Is he carrying coons? Is he carrying burr rabbit? Nobody knows what he's carrying. The 49er, the ghost of the plains, old Sacatican Jack, the walking saint, the prospector. The spirits and ghosts of hoboism are gone, but they, the prospectors, want to fill their unspeakable sacks with gold. Teddy Roosevelt, Plico Hobo, Fatchel Lindsay, Troubadour Hobo, CD Hobo, how many pies for one of his poems? The Hobo lives in Disneyland, Pete the Tramp Land, where everything is human lines, tin men, moon dogs with rubber teeth, orange and purple paths, emerald castles in the distance looming, kind philosophers of witches. No witch ever cooked a hobo. The hobo has two watches you can't buy it in Tiffany's. One, on one wrist the sun, on the other wrist the moon. Both bands are made of sky. Hark, hark, the dogs do bark. The beggars are coming to town. Some in rags, some in tags, and some in velvet gowns. The jet age is crucifying the hobo because how can he hop a freight jet? Does Luella Parsons look kindly upon hobos, I wonder? Henry Miller would allow the hobos to swim in his swimming pool. What about Shirley Temple, to whom the hobo gave the bluebird? Are the young temples bluebirdless? Today the hobo has to hide. He has fewer places to hide. The cops are looking for him. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Hobos seen in the vicinity of bird in hand. Jean Valjean weighed with a sack of candelabra, screaming to youth, There's your sou, your sou. Beethoven was a hobo who knelt and listened to the light, a deaf hobo who could not hear other hobo complaints. Einstein the hobo with his ratty turtleneck sweater made of lamb. Bernard Baruch, the disillusioned hobo sitting on a park bench with voice catcher plastic in his ear, waiting for John Henry, waiting for somebody very mad, waiting for the Persian epic. Sir Guy Eisenin was a great hobo who took advantage of the Russian Revolution to rush around drinking potato juice in the backward villages of Russia. His most famous poem is called Confessions of a Bum. Who said at the moment they were storming the Tsar Right now I feel like pissing through the window at the moon. It is the egoless hobo that will give birth to a child someday. Li Po was a mighty hobo. Ego is the greatest hobo. Hail hobo ego, whose monument someday will be a golden tin coffee can. Jesus was a strange hobo who walked on water. Buddha was also a hobo who paid no attention to the other hobo. Chief rain in the face, weirder even. W.C. Fields, his red nose explained the meaning of the triple world. Great vehicle, lesser vehicle, diamond vehicle. The hobo is born of pride, having nothing to do with the community, but with himself and other hobos and maybe a dog. Hobos by the railroad embankments cook at night huge tin cans of coffee. Proud was the way the hobo walked through a town by the back doors where pies were cooling on window sills. The hobo was a mental leper. He didn't need to beg to eat. Strong western bony mothers knew his tinkling beard and tattered yoga. Hoga. Come and get it. But proud be proud. Still, there was some annoyance because sometimes when she called, come and get it, hordes of hobos came, 10 and 20 at a time, and it was kind of hard to feed that many. Sometimes hobos were inconsiderate, but not always. But when they were, they no longer held their pride. They became bums. They migrated to the Bowery in New York, to Scully Square in Boston, to Pratt Street in Baltimore, 
to Madison Street in Chicago, to 12th Street in Kansas City, to Larimer Street in Denver, to South Main Street in Los Angeles, to downtown 3rd Street in San Francisco, to Skid Row in Seattle, blighted, blighted areas all. The Bowery is the haven for hobos who came to the big city to make the big time by getting push carts and collecting cardboard. Lots of Bowery bums are Scandinavian. Lots of them bleed easily because they drink too much. When winter comes, bums drink a drink called smoke. It consists of wood alcohol and a drop of iodine and a scab of lemon. This they, they gulp down and wham! They hibernate all winter so as not to catch cold because they don't live anywhere and it gets very cold outside in the city in winter. Sometimes hobos sleep arm in arm to keep warm right on the sidewalk. Bowery Mission veterans say that the beer drinking bums are the most belligerent of the lot. Fred Bunce is the great Howard Johnson's of the bums. It is located on 277 Bowery in New York. They write the menu in soap on the windows. You see the bums reluctantly paying 15 cents for big br pig brains, 25 cents for goulash, and shuffling out in thin cotton shirts in the cold November night to go and make the lunar bowery with a smash of broken bottle in an alley where they stand against a wall like naughty boys. Some of them wear adventurous rainy hats picked up by the track in Hugo, Colorado, or blasted shoes kicked off by Indians in the dumps of Juarez, or coats from the lugubrious salon of, of the seal and fish. Bum hotels are white and tiled and seemed as they were upright johns. Used to be bums told tourists that they once were successful doctors. Now they tell tourists they were once guides for movie stars or directors in Africa, and that when TV came into being, they lost their safari rights. In Holland, they don't allow bums, the same maybe in Copenhagen, but in Paris, you can be a bum. In Paris, bums are treated with great respect and are rarely refused a few francs. There are various kinds of classes of bums in Paris. The high-class bum has a dog and a baby carriage in which he keeps all his belongings and that usually consists of old Francois, rags, tin cans, empty bottles, broken dolls. This bum sometimes has a mistress who follows him and his dog and carriage around. The lower bums don't own a thing. They just sit on the banks of the Seine, picking their nose at the Eiffel Tower. The bums in England have English accents and it makes them seem strange. They don't understand bums in Germany. America is the motherland of bumdom. American hobo Lou Jenkins from Allentown, Pennsylvania was interviewed at French Buns on the Bowery. What you want to know all this info for? What you want? I understand you've been a hobo traveling around the country. How about giving a fellow a bit, few bits of, for some wine before we talk? I'll go get the wine. Where's this going to be in? The Daily News? No, in a book. What are you young kids doing here? I mean, where's the drink? Al's gone to the liquor store. You wanted Thunderbird, wasn't it? Yeah. Lou Jenkins then grew worse. How about a few bits for a flop tonight? Okay, we just want to ask you a few questions. Like, why did you leave Allentown? My wife, my wife, never get married. You never live it down. You mean to say it's going to be in a book? Hey, what I'm saying? Come on, say something about bums or something. Well, what do you want to know about bums? A lot of them around, kind of tough these days, no money. Listen, how about a good meal? See you in the Sagamore, respectable bums cafeteria at 3rd in Cooper Union. Oh, okay, kid, thanks a lot. He opens a Thunderbird bottle with one expert flip of the plastic seal. Glop. As the moon rises resplendent as a rose, he swallows with big ugly lips thirsty to gulp the throat down sclop. And down goes the drink and his eyes pop themselves and he licks tongue on top lip and says, ha, and he shouts, don't forget my name is spelled Jenkins, J-E-N-K-Y-N-S. Another character. You say that your name is Ephraim Fries of Pauling, New York? Well, no, my name is James Russell Hubbard. You look pretty respectable for a bum. My grandfather was a Kentucky colonel. Oh, yeah. Whatever made you come here to Third Avenue? I really can't do it. 
I don't care. I can't be bothered. I feel nothing. I don't care anymore. I'm sorry, but somebody stole my razor blade last night. If you can lay some money on me, I'll buy myself a chic razor. Where will you plug it in? You'll have, do you have such facilities? A chic injector. Oh, and I always carry this book with me. The Rules of St. Benedict. A dreary book, but where I got another in my pack. A dreary book too, I guess. Why don't you read it then? Because I found it. I found it in Bristol last year. What are you interested in? You like interested in something? Well, this other book I got here is a uh, yeah, yeah, bit strange book. You shouldn't be interviewing me. Talk to that old Negro fellow over there with the harmonica. I'm no good for nothing. All I want is to be left alone. I see you smoke a pipe. Yeah, grind your tobacco. Want some? Will you show me the book? No, I ain't got it with me. I only got this with me. He points to his pipe and tobacco. Can you say something? Latin and flash. The American hobo is on the way out as long as sheriffs operate with, with us. Louis Fernandin Céline said, one line of crime and nine of boredom. Because having nothing to do in the middle of the night with everybody gone to sleep, they pick on the first human being they see walking. They pick on lovers on the beach even. They just don't know what to do with themselves in those $5,000 police cars with the two-way Dick Tracy radios except pick on anything that moves in the night and in the daytime on anything that seems to be moving independently of gasoline, power, army, or police. I myself was a hobo, but I had to give it up around 1956 because of increasing television stories about the abominableness of strangers with packs passing through by themselves independently. I was surrounded by three squad cars in Tucson, Arizona at 2 a.m. as I was walking pack on back for a night's sweet sleep in the Red Moon Desert. Where are you going? Sleep. Sleep where? On the sand. Why? Got my sleeping bag. Why? Studying the great outdoors. Who are you? Let's see your identification. I just spent a summer with the Forest Service. Did you get paid? Yeah. Then why don't you go to a hotel? I like it better outdoors and it's free. Why? Because I'm studying hobo. What's so good about that? They wanted an explanation for my hoboing. It came close to hauling me in, but I was sincere with them and they ended up scratching their heads and saying, go ahead if that's what you want. They didn't offer me a ride four miles out to the desert. And the sheriff of Cochise allowed me to sleep on the cold clay outside Bowie, Arizona, only because he didn't know about it. There's something strange going on. You can't even be alone anymore in the primitive wilderness. Primitive areas, so-called. There's always a helicopter comes and snoops around. You need camouflage. Then they begin to demand that you observe strange aircraft for civil defense as though you knew the difference between regular strange aircraft of any kind of strange aircraft. As far as I'm concerned, the only thing to do is sit in a room and get drunk and give up your hoboing and your camping ambitions because there ain't a sheriff or fire warden in any of the new 50 states who will let you cook a little meal over some burning sticks in the tool break or the hidden valley or any place anymore because he has nothing to do but pick on what he sees out there on the landscape moving independently of the gasoline power army police station. I have no ax to grind. I'm simply going to another world. Ray Radmaker, a fellow staying at the mission in Bowery, said recently, I wish things was like they was when my father was known as Johnny the Walker of the Little of the White Mountains. He once straightened out a young boy's bones after an accident for a meal and left. The French people around there called him Le Passant. He who passes through. The hobos of America who can still travel in a healthy way are still in good shape. They can go hide in cemeteries and drink wine under cemetery groves of trees and make trade and sleep on cardboards and smash bottles on the tombstones and not care and not be scared of the dead but serious and humorous in the cop avoiding night and even amused and leave litters of their picnic between the grizzled slabs of imagined death, cussing what they think are real days. But oh, the poor bums of the skid row. There he sleeps in the doorway, back to wall, head down with his right hand, palm up, as if to receive from the night the other hand, hanging strong, firm, like Joe Louis hands, pathetic, made tragic by unavoidable circumstance. 
the hand like a beggar is upheld with the fingers forming a suggestion of what he deserves and desires to receive, slapping the arms, shaping the arms, thumb almost touching fingertips as though on the tip of the tongue he's about to say in sleep and with that gesture that what he couldn't say awake. Why haven't you taken this away from me that I can draw my breath in the peace and sweetness of my own bed? But here in these dull and nameless rags on this humbling stoop, I have to sit waiting for the wheels of the city to roll. And further, I don't want to show my hand, but in sleep I'm helpless to straighten it. Yet take this opportunity to see my plea. I'm alone. I'm sick. I'm dying. See my hand up tip. Learn the secret of my human heart. Give me the thing. Give me your hand. Take me to the emerald mountain beyond the city. Take me to the safe place. Be kind. Be smile. Nice. Be, sm be nice. Smile. I'm too tired now of everything else. I've had enough. I give up. I quit. I want to come home. Take me to my... Take me. Oh, brother, in the night. Take me home. Lock me in. Safe. Take me to where all is peace and amity. To the family of, of life, my mother, my father, my sister, my wife, and you, my brother, and you, my friend. But no hope, no hope, no hope. I wake up and I'd give a million dollars to be in my own bed. Oh, Lord, save me. And evil roads behind gas tanks where murderous dogs snarl from behind wire fences. Cruisers suddenly leap out like getaway cars, but from a crime more secret, more baneful than words can tell. The woods are full of wardens.